We welcome you tonight. Thank God for your life. Uh, I am excited. I'm excited about what the Holy Spirit is saying unto us. As I said, I believe like never before we are in for a move of the Holy Ghost like we had not experienced before. And uh, with all of that, uh, it's, it's God who causes a man to believe on Jesus. And so I'm just praying according to his word, Lord, uh, it says no man can come to the father, uh, to the son, except the father draw him. And so it was the Holy Spirit that came upon me. I was minding my own business. And so I said to God this morning, you did it for me, God, do it for them. I believe that people are going to be quickened in their spirit, in the workplaces, uh, sitting at the dinner table, uh, in, in stores, uh, just everywhere. The Bible says that he's in the last days, he's going to pour his spirit out upon all flesh. As we was talking to you on Sunday, I believe that these are the days that we are in. So we, God had to get our minds out of thinking that he was confined to a building or brick and mortar or, or, uh, or a denomination or this or that and the other. But he says, listen, I'm about to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And our finite little minds, uh, many times we, we put to buildings or organizations God is so much bigger than all of our organizations and our buildings and all those different types of things. Uh, and I just want you to know that church is a people and not a place. And so my heart and my focus is to build a people. Uh, and that takes each and every one of us being developed uh, because when I become a person of God, we can become the people of God. And uh, we become a people of purpose and power and influence. And so, that's what we're doing, and I'm excited about that. You guys are looking so good tonight. Amen. The lighting's well on you. Uh, it is good. It is good. And I'm so glad of the, the influence uh, that the Holy Ghost is having on the body of Christ. And uh, again, I thank God for you all being courageous and having faith and trusting in our leadership. Uh People are trying to figure out what we're doing and how we're doing it now because they know they've realized it's necessary. And so let's keep on plowing new grounds, getting better and better of it. And you guys are the proof of what I've declared of what God wanted to do. So I believe for greater upon each and every one of you, the fruit that are gonna be coming from your lives, the fruits that's from your lives, um, the evidence that where we where we're moving to and where we're going is um, is 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 fruitful, and it's of God, and so I'm excited for you, Amen. I'm excited for you. This is gonna be the literally the best year of your life, right. Amen. I say that in the Holy Ghost. I say that you're going to see that your labor has not been in vain. Your tears have not been in vain. Your prayers, your time of study, the sacrifices Lord. you've made, the seeds Lord. you have sown. Amen. The seed of the word is going to produce a harvest. Yeah. You're going to have people coming back to you that you prayed for, that you shared a word with, and they're going to be get, begin getting connected to what you're connected to. Most of all, God, but then yeah. in the physical, what we're doing in the earth. Amen. Yeah. I believe that yes. Yes. no yeah. seed falls on the ground and just dies. Hmm. Every seed produces a harvest. Glory to God. And yes. so I want you believing that and I want you praying about that and watering that in prayer. Your intercession is the water. Okay. Water and that and you're going to watch the harvest come forth. Yes. Praise God. And I don't care where they are in the world. I don't care where they are. Praise God. We have taken the limits off. So your cousins, your family members, your friends, uh, brothers and sisters that have moved away. Hey Amen. Listen, people are ringing my phone. Uh, saying when can we get together that that was once with us and now they're, they're they're wanting to reconnect once again to the voice amen it's God's voice it's not me it's God's voice and so uh, you're a person of influence okay so let's enjoy it let's be on it and uh, I'm thankful thank God for Tracy she's in Atlanta and, and Gloria's off tonight and we thank God for her 
and uh everybody's caleb's on he was one of the first people on hey man yeah ready to go looking studious hey man looking studious so we thank god mr Devers off tonight thank god for her she's out there on them front lines hey man just got off the phone with my wife she's uh she's uh she's out there on the front line she'll get on probably a little later if she gets off early enough okay but we thank god the blood of jesus is covering them okay anybody that's working out there in the public tracy's working out there in the public um you know so we thank god for the blood of jesus all right the blood of jesus okay so talking about influence um the holy ghost guys is the influencer for us internal influence we start talking about uh, that on sunday and we start talking about, you know, getting away from what the world put on us, which was to impress people. And God's called us to influence. Got to know the difference. Impressing someone draws attention to yourself. And it's short term. And that will produce poverty in you as well as in their lives. Because we need to make sure that they're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of their faith. Amen. If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto himself. And so he gave us a person of the Holy Spirit to be our holy influence, that we would have influence almost without effort, without effort, because he's the one that's doing the work. Amen. And so we started learning about gifts. Okay. The spiritual gifts. We've gone through the, um, the, the, the power gifts and we've gone through the, uh, the revelation gifts. And now we've been dealing with the utterance gift, which is prophecy, divers tongues. And we find these in 1 Corinthians 12, right? Divers tongues and uh, interpretation of tongues. Uh, on Sunday, we took you to Acts where we seen that Jesus, this was the promise of God, this comforter and the evidence that they had received this comforter this, this promise of God was they spoke in unknown tongues, okay? They spoke in unknown tongues. The first evidence of that uh, was them. This is in Acts 1, okay? And uh, Acts 2, uh, Acts 1 and 8 was a promise. Acts 2, um, you see that they spoke to all the people that were around them. They were from all over. And the first thing they said was these men must be drunken. And Peter spoke up. So that was one of the things that happens to a person when they get filled with the Holy Ghost. They, there has a holy boldness. There's a witness. There's a testimony that comes to you of testifying about heaven. So this diver's tongues, this gift of tongues, this unknown tongue, guys, is testifying of heaven. It's a heavenly language. Okay. Stephanie's going to help. Sam's going to help. Uh, help us teach tonight talking about this these divers tongues and I just want to encourage you guys that are LCU students my guy you guys have this information um, that we are teaching from uh, if you've gone through the second year uh, I think this is a second year course but um, these tongues um, is the door to the supernatural it is evidence that the supernatural has occupied you uh, not that you're looking from it from afar off, but supernatural ability has come upon your life. Uh, that's good news right there. Amen. That's good news. And it's received by faith. Okay. And uh, it's the initial physical evidence when people are baptized in the Holy Ghost. All right. One of the things I want to encourage you to do is don't forget about it. Uh, this is one of our many benefits. It's one of our many benefits, and it, it works to your advantage. It refreshes, it revitalizes, it develops your most holy faith. It causes you to be able to rest, to know things you don't know, to join in the conversation you have and God's having about you in heaven. Uh, man, this is your advantage. And don't let nobody talk to you or talk you out of 
the Holy Ghost's uh, impartation of this divine gift or this supernatural gift in your life. And I want to encourage all of you, use him the more. He makes intercession for us according to the will of God. Okay. Pray in tongues daily. Amen. I mean daily, all throughout the day. Glory to God. It is most beneficial to you. All right. Ah, uh, it's a supernatural sign. When you get born again, do you know that that's something supernatural happening to your life? Your spirit, man, has just become new. Okay, it has just become new. And then after you have become born again, you become a candidate for this gift. And then for God to affirm you through giving you this gift, to dwell on the inside of you, it is something to be godly, uh, godly proud about, not to be ashamed of it. So I don't want you to be ashamed of this gift. There are some that don't understand it, but they will be most beneficial. Remember he told y'all in 1 Corinthians 12 that these spiritual gifts, amen, prophets with all, everybody prophets when spiritual gifts are in operation. Can y'all not see? Y'all can talk to me now. We can have some convocation. I'm a conversation. I, I, I know I'm, I'm teaching, but I want y'all to help me teach. I'm just trying to prime the fire. Amen. I want you to get fired up about the Holy Ghost because we got to talk about this Holy Ghost. Amen. Because it's prophets with all. Everybody profits when spiritual gifts are in operation. It keeps people from operating in the spirit of stupid. Come on now, it, it, it helps us operate in wisdom and to have knowledge, okay? Be knowledgeable, praise God, to discern things. Remember that, discerning the spirits? Oh my God, you don't ever have to be hoodwinked and bamboozled another day in your life because of discernment. Glory to God, you can stand in somebody's face and you know because of discernment, you can say, now are you telling the truth? And you don't have to be angry. You don't have to get offended. <laughs> but boy, when God gives you discernment and a word of knowledge concerning what they're sharing. And can I tell you something, even with parents, my God, when you allow this spiritual gift to operate in you and children come and they're not telling the whole truth and you sitting there and you're not getting angry and upset, but you just tell them what the truth is. Their eyes will get big, Pastor Sam. And they'd be wondering, now, how did you know that? How did you know that? Then they'll start, start saying stuff like, no, nah, I can't be lying to mama. Can't be lying. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't lying to grandma. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay? And do you know you can stop a whole lot of foolishness in the earth if you will embrace these spiritual gifts that God has given to us? Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful to cause integrity to be more so and more prevalent in the earth because people operating the spiritual gift and 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 had the the, the virtue of courage operating in them and they just say, now are you telling the truth about that? Come on, talk to me. I know this is interesting. <laughs> Come on, Stephanie. Bishop, <laughs> uh, one of our visitors has a question, and the question was. How can you pray in tongues throughout the day? Wouldn't that mean that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is in you? Yes, he is in you. He is in you. And it's a gift. It's a gift. Just like somebody can sing any time of the day because that's a gift. that We'll say that, you know, well, God's gifted them to sing what a person sings. Well, by faith, we receive the Holy Spirit. This is a uh, impartation that happens after your is is something subsequent to you being born again. Okay, it is it is an advantage that's added to you, and so yes, the Holy Spirit is in you now, and that is how it's able to speak through you. Okay, and it's all by faith. It's all by faith that we receive these things. All right. Yes, great question. Great question. And, and um, just like anything else, you have to exercise it. You have to practice. I tell everybody that you need to have a spiritual workout just like you would do a natural workout. 
Like we try to take care of our physical body. We say, well, we need to walk every day. We need to do these types of things. We need to do that uh, stretch and those types of things. Well, you need to stretch spiritually. You need to grow spiritually. And that's why I encourage everybody to, to pray in the spirit every day so that you can begin enlarging uh, your ability to hear. Uh, Jude 20 tells us that it edifies us and it builds up our most holy faith. Okay. So you're going to be growing in faith. You're going to be believing more. And if you're believing more, you're receiving more. You're going to be, develop confidence. Um, Romans 8, 26 says that when we allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us like that, he is, he's going to deal with our infirmities, our weaknesses, uh, in our mind, our will, and our emotion. It brings about emotional stability, praying in the spirit. Because there's times we're wounded and we don't even know we're wounded. Sometimes things are trying to overwhelm us. But this praying in the Holy Spirit is constantly washing us, constantly cleansing us from the, the, the things that come to contaminate us and to do harm to us, okay? So with that, you stay healthy. Most of our physical ailments is coming from a spiritual problem. Stress, worry, okay, fear, different things that take on physical manifestations. Well, just imagine if we paid more attention to the spiritual realm, and we are, we are a spirit that houses in a body that has a soul. And so if we'll pay more attention to our spirit man than the physical man, then who we are in Christ manifests itself rather than what this body and what uh, the, the mind, will, and emotion wants to do, okay? We're going down, oh no, I'm trying to stay on tongues and we're gonna get there. Uh, Bishop. Yes. Uh, this is mother. Um, you know, sometimes when you're go when we're going through a little bit of stress times and and you're not, you know, a lot of times when you're not paying a lot of things that, you know, like you're not paying any attention to something particular and you're just going, you know, through your day. And when we said that the Holy Spirit will pray for us because sometimes we don't know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. And I can find myself sometimes I can be in the midst of maybe going to, just walking toward the kitchen or and before I know it, I'm praying in tongue. Come, you know, you just, it'll pick up where we cannot, and maybe it could, award, could ward off something that we're not even paying attention to or getting ready to walk into something. I'm just saying, so because that's, when you pray in tongues during the day, it, it's kind of like it just comes out of you, it comes up and it comes out, at least it does with me. And so I'm just saying there are times when the Holy Spirit will pray for us when we yeah. don't know what we should be praying for or you know he's he sees us he knows us and yes. he will start praying and, and before you know it your mouth is open and you are praying in tongues yes and and we've got to know that the holy spirit is there as our helper yes he's there to help us he's there to protect us to lead us and guide us into all truth and truth isn't facts truth is a matter as god sees it okay uh, truth is what God's intentions are for us. It's a fact you may, something didn't go the way that you want it to go. But truth is, is that it's going to work together for good. Okay. Fact that it's not looking like you want to look. But truth is, I can call things to be not as though they were. I can change what it looks like by what I'm saying out of my mouth. And so that's a faith thing and praying in the Holy Spirit. And I want y'all to take this down as a note. If we're praying the Holy Ghost intentionally, not as a, as a, as a, as a him coming to rescue us, but if we can get on top of this thing and get in front of it and use him offensively. I've prayed in the Holy Ghost so that I'm built up and I'm strong and, and so then when the thing comes, amen, it just falls off of us like a water on a duck's back, okay? It doesn't even cause us to stumble. We don't even, even bear any, any, 
It doesn't take us, a, it doesn't take an hour out of our day. It doesn't weaken us because we've built up a spiritual momentum because we've prayed in the Holy Ghost. And so I'm talking about using this gift as an offensive tool because we understand why he's here now. And this is transitioning from being a babe in Christ to maturing in Christ, okay? To being led by a spirit, okay? Uh, and and how, do, how do I need to say that? It's almost like this. Before we got saved, Pastor Sam, and I see you clicked on and I want you to make your point. Before we got saved, we didn't even know we needed the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit intervened and he, he influenced us and encouraged us to call upon the name of the Lord and we got born again. Well, that's excellent. But then now that I am born again and I understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the influence of the Holy Spirit, I'm now gonna be influenced by him. And instead of him having to rescue me, I'm working along or, or with him and I'm getting on the offense with him. And now I'm going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And, and uh, uh, man, I'm an asset to him now. I experiencing more and more victory, things that used to trouble me, caused me to stumble, uh, slow my life down, don't do it anymore because I've got victory over those things. Does that make sense? I hope I explained that enough. And that's just as we're growing from faith to faith. And that's why we're teaching you these things. These are the body of Christ's secret weapons. Okay. Pastor Sam, come on. You might can help me out on that. <laughs> You said it all in a nutshell. Uh, what I was going to say was, um, uh, like you were saying, as you grow, you're able to pray a victory stand instead of a, a, a victim stand because you are grown in faith. So you're no longer praying from like you're a victim. But okay. You okay. So, so now... You, you're, you're using it offensively. And like what mother said, man, he'll intervene for us. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing and, and wanting us to get another step ahead. And he's still, he's going to always do what mother Irma's talking about. Okay. But I, I, I want us to know this is our advantage and let's take full advantage of this. Okay. Take full advantage of this. Jude 20, uh, he edifies us. He builds us up. He gives us courage he gives us confidence and he gives us faith uh, the faith to do the will of god okay talking about divers tongues talking about the holy spirit um see. Steph, do you have anything else on that? Bishop, I was just going to say, just to kind of um, piggyback off of what you were saying and what Pastor Sam was saying, an example of that is when we were talking about in Acts 2, you know, where you um, definitely made that point where Peter stood up to kind of like, you know, defend the faith almost. Mm -hmm. um, if you go back, you know, remember uh, Christ had told him, you know, there's gonna, a time is gonna come where you're gonna, you know, denounce me, you know? And so he did that. But after being filled with the Holy Spirit and having that strength and that courage and knowing that experience that he had, he stood up and defended um, the brethren and let them know and kind of explain what was going on when we talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts 2. Okay. Here's some scriptures for you all. And, and again, I want you all studying. I want you to be able to teach, to teach, to teach. Because I want you to tell you something. Uh, I want to I tell you this. Lord have mercy. Help me, God. This is a deficit that's in many people's life. And this is something that's holding them back from gaining the victory that they need. 
They have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And even there are some, I'm teaching a many who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they don't understand its function or its purpose and they're not experiencing the benefits, okay? You don't have to be intimidated or overwhelmed another day in your life. Sometime you may not know what's going on, but if you will yield to this gift of tongues, tongues will get you in conversation with God. You can hear what's going on and then you can find, hear the voice of God, receive the instruction. If your faith isn't where it needs to be, you can get to faith while you're praying in the spirit. You can get the courage. Okay. You can get the strength. Um, um, you can get the peace. You can get the joy that you need while these things don't happen. When you're praying in the spirit, it's a time of refreshing. It's a time of, of uh, revitalization. It's a time of you being washed. Okay. The Holy Spirit is washing you and cleansing you from things that have come to contaminate you, uh, to bring separation between you and God. Okay. Man, I, I, I can't. If I could, if I could just explain it in a way that you can get this thing, it is one of your most valuable things that God has given to you. Okay. And so many people don't know its purpose and don't use it. And some don't even believe in it and they are missing out on much of the life this holy spirit the holy spirit and this gift allows you to live i'm not talking about exist i'm not talking about survive i'm talking about it helps you access life okay the god kind of life hallelujah and and if i can say this to you it's really your first language you were with God in heaven before you ever came in earth and you were taught English. You see, you're more familiar with English because that's what you was taught. But that's since good, you've been redeemed and we claim back to God, okay, now he wants to tell you what your natural language is. It's supernatural and it's unnatural to many, but it's actually the language that's going on in heaven. And he wants you to have it. He wants you to experience it and, uh, and, and have the benefits. Enjoy the benefits of it. Okay. Come on, let's talk. If there's any questions, let's go out there. Let's get it. You can also say it's like God's ability to do what you can't do. It's because it's going to navigate you. It, uh, as you say, it cleans you. Because if you are on your way somewhere, it's just like you go on an airplane. You can't go on an airplane with, with extra baggage. So it takes off the baggage so you can your flight can be a lighter. So it takes all those things off that, that's going to cause you to, to stumble. If you feel like you're drowning, he, he's your life coach. I mean, he's your lifeguard to, to help you from drowning. Because sometimes we drown in the cares of this world. So mm -hmm. when we pray in the spirit, then the Holy Spirit comes and takes those cares from you. Mm -hmm. You're able to release them. So now your walk is lighter. You're able to see where you're going. You're able to hear God clear. That's mm -hmm. what happens when you pray in the spirit. It's God's ability to do what you can't do on your own. That's good. It cleans your ears out. It allows yes. you to hear his voice. It causes you to become more familiar with him. God is a spirit and them that worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. This these tongues is also an act of, of uh, it's, a, it's a devotional gift. It's a devotional gift. Man, it'll take you and lead you into worship. It'll lead you into a praise. Okay. Like Pastor Sam said, it'll begin to free you off of all the cares of life and the, and the worries and the fears and the doubts and the, and the things that you don't know. And I tell you this, when you pray in tongues, it'll activate one of the other spiritual gifts. All of a sudden, a word of knowledge comes to you. You didn't know what to do about a thing. But because by faith you pray in the spirit, now a word of knowledge comes to you. And you're given exactly what you need to do, okay, concerning something you didn't know what to do about, okay? 
a word of wisdom comes. You get understanding about something that's going on around you that had you upset, it had you uh, challenged, but then a word of wisdom comes to you and uh, you have an understanding of what's happening now and you know exactly what to do, just as Pastor Sam was saying, <clears throat> okay? And then all the other spiritual gifts, okay? Uh, you just got a, a, a doctor report, okay? Fact is, something's not right in your physical body. <clears throat> Excuse me. You pray in tongues. You, you don't take what, what the fact is. You pray in the spirit. And all of a sudden, the gift of healing gets activated in you, okay? Now the gift of healing flows on you. You get healed, praise God. And, and, and the thing that you went, that, that the doctor talked about, heaven deals with it. And it's not even operating in your life anymore. Okay. Everybody profits through these spiritual gifts. He wants you to profit first of all. You don't ever have to be intimidated or overwhelmed with the cares of life when you understand I'm born again, I'm spirit filled, and I have spiritual gifts that are available unto me. And if I have need of them, I can receive them by faith. Okay. For yourself, listen at this, or on the behalf of somebody else. On behalf of somebody else. Okay. Come on, somebody else. Question, comment. Bishop, I just wanted to say that the Holy Spirit also um, helps to make your prayers effective. The effective, fervent prayers of the righteous avail of much. And the Holy Spirit is an illuminator. So he makes the scriptures come alive to us. Ah. When we start, you know, talking about our enlightening, being mm -hmm. under, um, our, our understanding, being enlightened. Mm -hmm. When we start talking about how God or Christ, the Holy Spirit will make known the mysteries, you know, of the kingdom. The Holy Spirit does that. That's his job to illuminate the scriptures and to remind us of things that God has said, his promises and his commands and even our commitments that we have made. And, um, you know, those desires, those things that we want to do to please God and to obey the scriptures. The Holy Spirit helps us in that. So he's like an aid, um, a counselor. Yes. And so you activate his characteristics in you by praying and being more intimate and the way that you embrace the intimacy is through the Holy Spirit. So you, it's almost like you're hugging and cuddling with Christ and God. Yeah. If I can put it in that tone. <laughs> yeah. It's fellowshipping with him fellowship. in the heavens. It's fellowshipping with him in the heavens so that you can, this is how we bring heaven on earth. This is one of the ways we get divine information. We get mysteries revealed unto us when we're praying in the spirit. We're joining in the conversation that's going on in heaven so that we can call things that be not in the earth as though they were. And that's how we see things change. We don't have to come in agreement with it because it's not, it's not, God's, not God's will. It's not what God intended, okay? But when we haven't had enough conversation with God, and the only conversation we've had is with our mind, our own mind, our own will, our emotions, or someone who is not having conversations with God. We're going to join in the same conversation they have and say the same thing that they're saying. And how many know that death and life is in the power of the tongue and then that love is going to eat the fruit thereof. And we have whatsoever we say. And so this advantage he's given to us through these spiritual gifts is how he wants to us to help him change the world. Okay. Yeah. Glory to God. And so this gives you significance. Uh, I want you to see your self-worth. Uh, man, we don't have to try to try to conform to this world or, or be mm -hmm. impressed with the world when God has granted us uh, these opportunities to uh to work with him in bringing to pass his will that's why jesus said if you'll pray that his kingdom will come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven this is how you get it done this is how we're able to accomplish that it is not far-fetched it is not far off 
okay? But we've got to embrace the process in order for us to be able to do it. Remember, all of the work that Jesus did, he did in the power of the Spirit. Well, this is one of the ways that you operate in the power of the Spirit, okay? Through praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues, using your heavenly language, all right? So you can proclaim in the earth what heaven is saying, okay? Proclaim in the earth what heaven is saying, even if it's to yourself, okay? Even if it's to yourself, even if it's to an environment that you're in, all right? You have insight. You have the mind of God and you're going to declare it. What you're doing now is remember, it's an utterance gift. God will say something to you while you're praying in the spirit that he needs you to say to the earth or to a person or to a thing or to a situation or a circumstance. Okay. Listen, we can speak to him. Jesus said, the works that you see me do, you can do also. We can speak to the winds. We don't have to, because they get on there, Matt, Matt, what's his name? Matt, Matt of TVA, the news guy. Because he gets on and talking about take cover. We got tornadoes coming. Don't you know the believer can say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I command the winds to settle down. Come on now. What do you have to lose? That's a matter of faith. And if you're not praying in the spirit, praying in tongues enough, you won't have faith when there's a need for you to say something or do something. The faith won't be there for you to do it. And then people suffer. Come on. Yes. Are y'all are getting this? There are times that we are suffering needlessly. Others are suffering needlessly because we don't utilize these spiritual gifts he has given to us. And the faith isn't present in order for us to carry out what he has empowered us to carry out. There are people that are still sick because we won't get the faith to lay hands on them or to proclaim that they are healed. Sometimes you. Sometimes it's you. It's a faith matter. It's not a God matter. It's a faith matter. He's into healing the sick. Signs and wonders, miracles. Praise God. He'll even raise the dead. The works that you see me do, you shall do also. I agree with that, God. All you got to do is tell him, I agree with that, God. Hmm? And then know that this praying in the spirit, go to Jude 20, you can read that. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up. It builds up your most holy faith. That's the faith that you need to do the will of God. Okay. And the will of God is known or, 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 or faith begins where the will of God is known. And you know the will of God from his word. So you must give attention to God's promises, okay, as well as the spiritual gifts that he has given to us to make sure that we can believe to receive his promises. Okay. Once you begin knowing the promises of God for your life, you won't be impressed trying to keep up with the people of the world. You won't. You, you won't be impressed with what they're doing because you have the true riches. You have true riches. Matter of fact, your, your, the, your desires changed. They change. You ain't even repressed with materialism and all those things anymore because you gain access over into the true riches of God. And you'll have greater joy seeing someone's life transformed than buying a new pair of shoes. Come on out. Then getting a new hairdo. Then, and I'm not telling you, please keep your hair done. Please look beautiful. Do all those things. Keep yourself groomed. I'm not saying don't do that. But what I'm saying is you're going to get a greater joy out of being able to work with the Holy Ghost and seeing someone's life transform or rescue from danger 
than the material carnal things that people of the world and don't know that they have this advantage has. Come on, you, 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 you will not eat rather than go out to eat because you're spending time sowing the seed of the word in somebody's life, okay? Or the Holy Ghost has you praying. Come on now, listen, it'll help some of our dietary issues. It really, really will. Because you've been in the presence of God, you don't have no appetite. So we stop using coping mechanisms. Hallelujah. We don't, we don't use, we don't use things that are destroying us as coping mechanisms because we we have the indwelling power of God working in us. And, and, and we don't have the desire for a lot of carnal things. Y'all talk back to me now. Bishop, that's one of the things that the Holy Spirit helped me. I'm speaking for me now is it helped me to die to my flesh. The more that I prayed in the Holy Spirit and the more that I fellowship with the Holy Spirit and the more the Holy Spirit was able to teach me and to lead me and guide me, it helped me to separate with some fleshly desires. Yeah, because the word is what? Sharper than a two-edged sword. It divides asunder the bone and the marrow, the flesh and the spirit. Am I right? Well, you know what the Holy Spirit is doing? The Holy Spirit is praying for you according to the will of God, making sure that all of the word that's been sown in you is manifesting itself. Hello, Bosiah. Huh. And Jesus in John 66, 63 says, my word is spirit and my word is life. This is how you begin to live, not just exist. Don't be, don't be sitting up and all you guys are hallelujah and all you got is a, you know, mm -mm, mm -mm. if you will cultivate to see that the word is on the inside of you by communing with the one whose responsibility is to make sure that that word manifests in your life, you'll begin seeing the life of the word operating in you rather than the life that's presented to you by the world. There'll be a peace that surpasses all understanding. There'll be a joy, truly. We didn't sing the song, the world didn't give it to me and the world didn't take it away. We didn't even know what we were saying. We were just singing some lyrics to a song. Now, I believe the person that wrote it might have had a revelation, but then we just mimicked it. And it's a lot of stuff we try to mimic, but it hadn't become our reality. And the Holy Spirit is the one that causes the word to become our reality. Come on. Hmm. It becomes your experience. It becomes now, girl, I ain't got to go on no more diet. I've been praying in the spirit long enough. I ain't ate in three days. And it ain't because I'm dieting. I don't need another gulu, mulu, another tea, another drink, another milkshake. I don't need none of that. I'm about to get in my purpose. I'm about to do what God has assigned me to. I'm about to fellowship with the one who's been sent to fellowship with me. And he's going to make sure that I'm healthy. Come on. Yeah, he's going to make sure that I'm healthy because he watches over God's word to perform it. It is God's will that I prosper and be in health as my soul prospers. I got holes in my soul. And I'm going to make sure there's no holes in my soul. Glory to God. That I might be healthy. And if I become spiritually healthy, everything else has to follow. Everything else has to follow. If I'll get spiritually healthy, the natural got to follow. Hmm? The battle is won and lost in my mind. That's why I must give attention to the promises of God. And I must make sure that my faith matches the promises. And the Holy Ghost is there and praying in tongues. It's what makes sure my fat faith matches my promise. Okay? Because without faith, it's impossible to please them. And you don't receive no rewards. Hmm? You can go to heaven sick. You can go to heaven broke. You can go to heaven a lot of things. But I'm talking about 
Amen. His kingdom come and his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God. I ain't ready to go home to glory yet. It's a lot of stuff I want to see. It's some joy that I want to experience. I want to see a move of God. I want to see more people knowing and the kingdom of God being their reality. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't finished yet. Some things in my heart I want to see. Hmm? <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bishop. Yes. I just wanted to say this. Um, from the studying that we're doing right now, I was just heard God say, um, every word that proceeded out of his mouth is what we're supposed to live from, right? Yep. So this lets me know, because of the studying that we're doing right now, He's saying he's sharpening our tools for the time and the season that we're in. Let us reminding us the, the, the spirit gift, the spiritual gifts that we have, so we know how to operate in this season. Mm -hmm. We're sharpening our tools so we can be ready and equipped to function the way he uh designed for us to function in this hour. That's that's what this is. These are practical instructions that you will be able to function as a kingdom citizen. Yes. Amen. And the purpose of God and the power of God, okay, with the influence of God. All right. The world ain't impressed with if you can sing. They can sing too. The world ain't impressed with your money. They ain't impressed with the clothes you wear because they got more clothes than you can probably think of. Okay. They might be staying at home with their mama or whatever, but they got some clothes because that's what gives them their worth. Okay. They ain't impressed with the cars we drive. They, they ain't impressed with money. They, they, they got some money that'll choke you, okay? They, they, that, that ain't it. But what they do not have is this divine influence, okay? This divine influence. Jesus showed them that. Some of the most prominent people walking on the face of the earth was drawn to the anointing that was on Jesus. Nicodemus, the centurion soldier, all these people were people of influence, okay? Come on. Saul. Saul was a person of influence, do you hear me? And it was a move of the Holy Ghost that came upon him on the road to Damascus that changed his whole perspective about things. And then he became one of the most influential writers of the gospel, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament when he was persecuting Christians. Hmm? He was murdering them. He was, he was like, y'all false God. He was killing them. And then he became fully persuaded, fully persuaded. The Holy Ghost is there to make sure you are fully persuaded. Make sure you're fully persuaded. Get rid of the cobwebs. Get rid of the doubts. Get rid of your fears, your in inhibitions, your lack of confidence, your low self-esteem. All those things, he's there to deal with it, to annihilate it. Come on now. And he'll call you in a conference. And don't quench the Holy Ghost. Don't quench him, praise God, and don't grieve him. Don't grieve him and don't quench him. Hello? He's your helper. He's a sign to make sure you finish like you're supposed to finish. Hallelujah. And listen at this. The Holy Spirit praying in tongues also makes sure that you have rivers of living water flowing in you. It should never dry up. If you can't pray in the Holy Ghost once you've been spirit filled and received that gift and all of a sudden now you can't pray, you dry. You dry. And now you need to get jump started, kick started again. And let me tell you something. For a while, the church did this. We kept having revivals and stuff and people would, 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 would get filled over and over again, you know, every time or some special speaker come in, they amazed with their personalities or whatever. And now they want to start praying in tongues and they think something one of them. It was always there. You just needed a personality to jump start you. 
but you need to mature and grow up to where you don't need no personality to jumpstart you. You need to know it's your responsibility. And when I start operating in responsibility, God starts showing me his ability and I don't keep going on this roller coaster. Dry and wet, wet and dry, in and out, double-minded, unstable in all my way, in the will of God, out of the will of God. Focus and then I'm off on a goose chase somewhere. Coming out because you have yielded yourself to the holy influence that God is designed to dwell in you. Come on now, to dwell in you. And he calls his consistency. He calls his faithfulness. He calls rivers of living water to flow in you continually. Do you hear me? Continually. He calls you to remain, be steadfast, unmovable. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's what the Holy Ghost is assigned to do for you. Okay? <laughs> Causes maturity to happen. A stream, a flow, continue. Maturity. The Holy Ghost is there. Take you from faith to faith. Glory to glory. All right? Rivers of living water. Life flowing. This is everlasting life. Flowing in you, to you. Listen to this, even through you. And you begin to, to develop into the place of Romans 8, 14. For as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay. Come on, talk to me. Ask some questions. This th th God's teaching us good tonight. This is good. So let me just ask you this question. So you don't have a question for me. How many have followed the instructions of of setting a goal of praying 15 minutes every day consistently in the Holy Ghost for 15 minutes straight. Okay. That was an instruction that came from heaven because he knows what we have need of. Okay. Do it. And when you begin to exercise it, it becomes natural. And so then your supernatural becomes more dominant than your carnal, than your natural, than the leading of your will, emotions, and your flesh. But you got to exercise. Okay, you got to exercise. I don't have time. Yeah, you do. It's a matter of life and death. <laughs> Either you're going to live or you're going to die slow. Hmm? It's a choice. I'm sure I'm teaching you about your advantages, things that people don't know. People are overwhelmed, intimidated with life, don't know how to deal with the cares of life, and you have the goods. But now we're going to be perfected in these things so that we can teach to teach to teach. We're going to be fully persuaded about how valuable the gift of the Holy Spirit is. We're going to know so that when people have questions and wrong information and wrong revelation concerning the gifts of the Spirit, we can teach them. That's why I'm teaching you. It is profitable for us to have the spiritual gifts in operation. That's why many churches are dying because of the 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 move the gifts of the spirit not being in operation 
And the reason why the buildings aren't filled is because the people aren't filled. How can you expect for people that's not filled, amen, that don't have the spiritual gifts in operation, that cause it to be a place that draws people, amen, who are in need of the spiritual gifts? I keep telling you, they ain't impressed with singing. They ain't impressed with preaching. But what the father does need to know, who wants to take my yoke upon you and learn of me? Because we realize it is an urgency. Society is in trouble. And you save me, father, and I want to learn of you so that I can make sure that my children ain't lost, my family members ain't lost, my neighbors ain't lost. Come on now, my coworkers not lost because the way this thing is looking, it don't look good. But I'm telling you, it's all good. It's a summons into consecration that we might know him in the power of his resurrection. All of these things we're talking about came out of his resurrection. We didn't hear that the, the, he got up on the third day long enough. Now we need some folk, amen, that, 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 that understand what happened after he got up. And what's working in me. That I might be a co-labor with him. Okay. Because all to be saved and that none would be lost. That's what Jesus said. I have to go and, and sit back at the right hand of my father. I got to go take my seat. He said, but I'm going to send you a comfort. I'm going to send you a helper. Okay. And through you, the works you see me do, you're going to do also. That's a clue. This is what I should be doing. How do I get there? How does this happen? Just as Jesus did. He came in the power of the spirit. So that's what we're going to have to do with him in the power of his spirit. And this gift of tongues is one of the ways we maintain the power of the spirit operating in our life. So please follow the instruction. Pray in the spirit. You may not make it the first time, but you got to exercise. It's kind of like somebody that's jogging or running. OK, you don't just get up and talk about, I'm going to start running. I'm going to be a runner and go out and run five miles. I don't think so. I don't think so. You fall out <laughs> or fall up, give up the ghost. <laughs> so 15 minutes. And once you make that 15 minute part, man, that mark, I guarantee you, you've exercised. So you'll look up and you say, I've been praying this spirit for 30 minutes. And oh, what a time I've had. Man, I feel refreshed. Man, da, 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 da. you know, da, 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 da. I mean, I don't know what God has done in you and to you and through you. And the thing about it is he's praying according to the will of God. You don't even know what you need to be praying. Many times we're praying out of our emotions or out of our own minds because we won't allow the Holy Spirit to get in between the bone and the marrow, the flesh and the spirit. Come on, Sam, too. You, did, did, did something hit? You got a question? <laughs> well, yeah, I was just thinking about, yes, we do have to allow the spirit to make intercession for us because oftentimes when we do pray in our, in our natural, in the English language, not our first language, but that English language, we are praying exactly for what we want a thing to be yeah. most often rather than for the will of God uh, to, to be established and be worked out in the, the Holy Spirit, the intercession of the Holy Spirit is giving us the tools we need to allow the manifestation of God's will to be done in our life. Whether it can be, it can help us in those uncomfortable times and in, in those uncomfortable situations. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I found out some information that was, that was, it was unsettling. It hit me. It was a dart. It hit. And um, I was asked, are you okay? And I was like, I'm okay. But I knew, I literally knew that I had to go somewhere and be by myself and pray in the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, to get myself right, to get my emotions in check, get my mind right, so that I could stay focused because I didn't want anything to, to deter me and take me off on a path 
So it is so profitable to our to uh, to our daily lives, profitable to others. It is profitable to our very being to yes, keep yes. us sane and moving forward. Absolutely. So, yeah. And to always reveal the truth, always making sure that you know the truth. That may be a fact, but it is not the truth. And the Holy Ghost is always going to testify of Jesus. Do you hear me? And when you allow the Holy Ghost to testify of Jesus in you, to you, and through you, guess what? You benefit too. You benefit. He's always going to remind you of what Jesus' life provided for you. Okay, they told you this, but he'll remind you you're healed already. You're healed by his stripes. And then the faith to receive your healing comes up in you because you're praying to the one that edifies you. The information or the fact tried to try to tear you down, but praying in the Holy Ghost builds you up. Okay, and then you'll say to the fact that you just heard what you need to say to it and agree with the one you need to agree with. Amen. And how can two walk together except they be agreed? Okay, we got to what you do daily determines your future. And what you do consistently determines your success. So this is something we need to be doing daily daily so that we're strengthening our inner man. Sometimes we're giving more attention to our exterior man than we are to our inner man. And if we would take care of this inner man, the outer man will be fine. Okay. Can y'all see that? And we got to know, you know, the world, man, the world is making billions of dollars off of every exercise, every, every workout, every, I mean, they got a thing that's on the mirror. Now you put it on the mirror, hang a mirror on the wall and you, and you doing all that. Man, they're making billions of dollars. And I'm not against uh, exercise because we need to exercise for cardio purposes. But what I'm saying is, is we're give, if we're giving more attention to that and not giving attention to the inner man, we out of balance and a false balance is an abomination unto the Lord. It's an unjust weight. That makes sense. So if I'm going to work out naturally, I'm going to work out spiritually too. Do a two for two for one. <laughs> I'm going to pray in tongues the whole time I'm working out. Glory to God. I'm getting a two for one. The enemy always going to tell you, you ain't got time for that. I used to tell God that back in the day, man, and God tried showing me where I was wasting time. Multitask. We multitask multi for a lot of things except for our spirit, man. Hmm. Why don't you see how much word is hidden in your heart? Okay. Why don't you see how much word is hidden in your heart? Why don't you pray all the word that you know? Come on. Not saying the same thing over and over. Are we good? Make sure you've heard something from heaven. And when you pray, say what heaven is, wants to say. Instead of what you usually say. This helping anybody? This is when we're growing. This is when we're maturing. This is when we're making progress. Okay. Good. Any more questions or comments? <laughs> I want you to know, the Father wants you to know how amazing the God in you is. He wants you to know how amazing the God in you is. He wants you to know it. He wants you to be confident in who he is. Amen. 
Don't focus on what he can do. Say, I want to know you. This is the way David said, teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. He didn't ask God to do nothing for him. He said, teach me your ways. I want to know you. I want to know how you think. I want to have, as, as First Peter tells us, I want to uh, uh, have a part, impartation of your divine nature. That's what I really want. Hmm. Glory. And praying in the spirit is what helps us to get there because he illuminates to us. He points us in the directions we need to go. He shows us he'll lead you where you need to read. He'll take what you read and make it make sense to you. He calls that word to come alive to you. He'll bring revelation knowledge to you. Okay. And that's what Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against. The revelation that you have of who he is. That's what he asked Peter, remember? Who do you say that I am? And Peter's response was, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And it prompted a response from Jesus that said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. Hmm? And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. This solid revelation that, I, that you have of me in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So you got to say, listen, my revelation, my increase in revelation of who Christ is, is going to keep hell under my feet. Hmm? This is how we win. And you can whistle while you work. Learn how to pray in tongues on the job. Learn how to pray in tongues while you're working out. Learn how to pray in tongues while you're driving. Turn the radio off. Turn them phones off. Quit posting on Facebook. Amen. Pray in tongues. And then when you post something, you'll pray what you heard out of heaven instead of just playing some game or something. Find 35 pictures and in the, in the first picture you find, post that. Now, you didn't look through 35 pictures and you took all that time. You could have been praying in tongues. Hearing something you really needed to hear. What, what did that do for you? So if you keep going through the day, I posted this the other day, Dr. Chan, one of my mentors. If you didn't go on through 24 hours and you ain't learned nothing, you just wasted a day. You got to start saying, what did I learn today? What did I learn today? What new information about God have I gained? What more did I, what did I learn? Uh, uh, did my faith increase today? What, what, what did I learn today? What great understanding did I come to? Are we okay? Yeah, don't get distracted. Don't be distracted from people that don't know what to do. You have a shepherd. You have the Holy Ghost. We're giving you instructions on what you need to be doing. You don't join in with people that don't know what to do. Because then you're going to have what they have. You are people of influence. You should be influencing people to meditate in the word, to pray in the Holy Ghost, to get born again, to get spirit filled. Come on now. To call things to be not as though they were. Lay hands on sick neighbor. Go. Don't be talking about your whole household sick. What's wrong with your house? Ain't nobody in there that got a revelation of Jesus. Then we need to fix that. And let's start with you. Because that ain't how we're going to live. Come on now. Don't be all empathetic and emotional. Who, who, then, y'all, I'm, I'm not being facetious, okay? Well, I'm just telling you how this thing just keeps on perpetuating. It, it has gotten out of control. Do you hear me? Everybody's emotional. Okay. Instead of dealing with the thing we need to deal with, sin has overtaken this society. Because 
the saints act like they are afraid to confront sin. And sin ain't just cussing and drinking and whatever else we might have think sin is. Whatever's not a faith is sin. Judgment begins at the house of the Lord. Do you know that God is saying, what is wrong with my children? I've given them everything that they need. I've sent the Holy Ghost. My son then died on the cross. The word is written for them. Amen. I got people, men and women of God, that's given the fivefold gifts, all these different types of things. What's wrong with my church? Why, why is the world looking like it's looking like? What's going on here? So you know what? He says, you know what? I got to step in here. I got to allow something to happen that's going to shut all of their stuff down that they doing. And those that have a here to hear going to hear what I'm saying and they're going to get back on track on what we need to be doing. Are we good? Don't be fighting to go back to what was because God's into what's now. You got a whole plethora of people that's called to buy. They're trying to get back to what was. Don't you know that wasn't working? That was not working. Have you, have you looked at the way things look like? That wasn't working. So what are we going to do different? Have you prayed in the Holy Ghost? Do, have you got a greater revelation? Have you gotten a divine strategy on what needs to happen so we can begin fixing this mess? Because this is a mess. It's a mess. Seeing all up in the church. And we're talking about the Lord know your heart. Lord know your heart. Lord know your heart. We well, you just got to love them. Just got to love them. Love them enough to tell them the truth. It wasn't until you got truth that you were made free. Mm -hmm. Now be mature enough to tell them the truth in love, not because you're offended or not because you don't believe in the, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I'm going to give it to you out of the joy that I have. Okay. Not because I'm mad at you, not because I'm offended with you, but out of the joy that I have that Jesus Christ, amen, came to make you whole. All right. Hallelujah. This helping anybody? Man, if the church don't get on fire about this gospel, about the ministry of the Holy Ghost, who you want to do it? Somebody twerking? Somebody? And, and, and listen, I'm, I'm not being a feast for Jesus again. If we don't do something, that child that's twerking, the Holy Ghost going to get a hold to them and they're going to emerge. Because the will of God is not going to fall to the ground. He will let a whole generation die in the wilderness. Now for me, he said to me as a shepherd, do not raise up another faithless, perverse generation. Don't do it. Okay. Okay. Glory. <laughs> y'all that made me teach harder than I plan to teach tonight. I love y'all. God loves y'all. Y'all, y'all somebody special. God loves you. You hear me? You guys are students. You're desirous of the things of God. There's a hunger. And the Father is feeding you. We're not going to be children and and eat and then rise up and go play. We're going to be good stewards over the seed of the word that's been sown in us tonight. We're going to leave this table and we're going to say, I'm going to pray in tongues for a minimum of 15 minutes every day. I'm going to meditate on this word. I'm going to make sure I know what I know and what I believe and what I understand. And I'm going to make sure I'm talking about and I'm saying what heaven is saying and not what I feel, not what everybody else is saying. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to focus and I'm going to function and I'm going to finish. My life is going to be fruitful. I'm going to bear fruit, much fruit and more fruit. I'm going to be a good steward of the true riches of God. I understand how powerful this gospel is. I understand how powerful the Holy Ghost is that dwells on the inside of me. I am a person of purpose and power and influence. And I will begin influencing 
everything around me. Because I'm going to yield to the most powerful influence there, there is. His name is the Holy Ghost. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. I'm going to yield. I'm going to yield to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to allow him to make intercession for me. I'm going to allow him to edify me. I'm going to stop trying to edify myself. Pacify myself. I'm going to allow the Holy Ghost to edify me. So I can get in touch with the real me, who I am in the Father. This is the greatest year of my life. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're going to know more than you've ever known this year. You're going to believe more than you've ever believed this year. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Strongholds of religion are destroyed in Jesus' name. Strongholds of religion are destroyed in Jesus' name. That was the purpose of the Holy Ghost coming. So that the supernatural could manifest in man's life. Okay. We got just a few more minutes. Questions or comments? I need three people to tell me what they learned tonight, what stood out to them tonight or question or comment. Bishop. Yes. This statement uh, came from kind of early on in my relationship in getting into the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit coming into me rather. And you know, when you first made the statement, you know, not to quench the Holy Spirit, <laughs> I'm sure this was not it per se, but when you quench something, you stop it or you don't allow it and you don't let it. Every time I would open up my mouth and the Holy Spirit would start coming out, or do the, mm -hmm. I could hear it and I could feel it. Come, well, it was coming out of me and I, mm -hmm. they used to, and they were, pr were praying with me and telling me, let it, take your hands down because, but every time it would rise up and it was yeah. starting to bubble up, I, or grow, I was quenching it, yes, but you know, but it, th that doesn't mean necessarily the way the real quenching of the spirit, not to quench the spirit, but I was holding my mouth not to allow it to come out. Mm -hmm. But once it came out, mm -hmm. it won't hush now. It comes out. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank Praise you, God. The Lord. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And you talk wonderfully tonight. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. God helps us. Yes. yes. He helps us. Yes. He helps us. Come on, somebody else. What stood out to me, Bishop, when you said the Holy Spirit was our internal uh, uh, influencer mm -hmm. and that uh, we ain't doing the work, the Spirit is doing the work. But, you know, we have to keep the Spirit activated in us in order for it to work through us. Mm -hmm. And how we do that, we got to continue to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. It stood out there with our internal influence that's good other thing i want us to know is is when we pray in the spirit consistently like that it keeps us full keeps us full of the holy ghost there's a subsequent there's a refilling that happens mm -hmm. every time i pray with him i get full filled up all again it's like if you're a good server stephanie was is a great server a great in a five-star restaurant they don't let your water glass get empty 
Don't let none of your drinks go dry. And that's what we got to know. God doesn't want us becoming dry. We got to be rivers of living water. It has to be a continual flow. And praying the Holy Ghost keeps the flow. It keeps us full. Okay? You don't want to be dry. You need to know if I'm dry or not. You ain't prayed in the tongues in a while. You dry. Because he wants to pray for you. An intercessor, amen, someone who's a true intercessor, you can't stop an intercessor from praying. You can tape their mouth closed or whatever. They'll pray internally. They'll pray in their spirit. Come on now. I'm talking about an intercessor now. And the Holy Ghost is an intercessor. He wants to pray through you. He wants to pray for you. Okay. Come on, somebody else. Bishop. Hey. What I learned. You got, you, you got, we got, uh, are you close to your granny? Right here. Don't say it now. Okay. You say it now. Okay. Say it now. What I learned, what you, you supposed to pray in town 15 minutes a day every day and when you got games to play and Monday and Tuesday and stuff that you got if you don't forgot to play you got and you got praying the Holy Ghost to God and he will tell you what the play was okay <laughs> that's good that's out of a child's mouth he said listen I'm playing the game but I'm praying in the Holy Ghost he'll remind me of what the plays are Come on, Caleb. That's what I'm talking about. Apply it to your life. <laughs> yeah. Just a, little, just a little memo right there. Yeah. Caleb requested to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit during the transition of us being virtual, and mm -hmm. he prays in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Glory Daily. To God. He asked it. He asked he, for it. He says, I want the Holy Ghost. I mm -hmm. want to pray like that, Bishop. I pray in the Holy Ghost. I pray um for tomorrow. I be praying for school that I have a good day too. Amen. That's it, son. That's it. That's the way you do it. Continue. Okay. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. That it, guys. He said, make sure there are no holes in your soul. Get spiritually healthy. Because I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm more spiritually healthy than I am naturally yeah. healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as like, you know, exercise and all this stuff. Sometimes I'm just really lazy sitting on my couch, reading my Bible, going over the notes that you, I mean, I'm just, you know. Yeah, I got you. And so I can understand feeling the holes in your soul so there's a balance okay yeah and I just want to encourage you sometimes we have a lot to do uh, I would do things like when you go to the store park far away and walk briskly as you go into the store you, you're killing two birds with one stone as the older people you know, say. you're getting some exercise uh, you don't know what you're doing you can walk brisk, briskly through the store getting a gallon of milk OK, you can take the long way. You're still picking up the gallon of milk. You're still doing those things and you're getting some exercise in at the same time. OK, you can do things at work. OK, on break, you can walk around the store. All right. Praying. Uh, there's things that you can do to get some physical exercise in while you're doing what you do. Whistling while you work. OK, whistling while you work. And, and I know that sometimes we feel like our physical bodies are wore out, but sometimes we're sluggish. And sometimes if we would pray in the Holy Ghost, he will refresh us, revitalize us and give us energy. Okay. So killing two birds with one stone, just think a little bit, think a little bit, say that, okay, I got to run some errands. I'm going to park in far parking spaces and I'm going to walk to the building. Uh, I'm gonna I'm take the steps instead of the elevator. I don't know, just depending on your terrain that you have to be in, okay? But you can kill two birds with one stone, whistling while you work, spiritual and physical. 
spiritual and physical. While I've been here, I've been going up and down my steps. I got some kind of steep steps in the house. I run up, I jog up them and I dance down them and I jog up them and I run down them. You know, every time I go down and, 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 and this, and one time I had forgot something, I had left my glasses down there and everything. And I was mumbling a little bit and God says, you need to go down them steps. And so I went down and I, and I, I briskly came back up. And so you can do things. If you're listening, God knows how to do things for you that you think you don't have time to do. Okay. You can do it. You can do it. All right. Spiritually and physically. Spiritually and physically. All right. Listen, guys, that's our time. Boy, what a time we've had tonight. I've enjoyed you so much. So, so much. Um, let's remember, let's worship in our giving tonight. Guys, we've fallen off on Wednesdays. Let's make sure we're staying, staying on focus. We got things we're finishing up and things that we're going ahead. Uh, we're going to roll out uh, 2021 plans of what we're going to do. We're going to see what this, what God does with this uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, but we've got some, some things we want to get done. We're going to keep growing, keep being prepared. Okay. And be ready to go when it's time to go. All right. And get some things done and natural. But the main thing is making sure that we are equipped. You guys are God's greatest asset. You hear me? You are. You're God's greatest asset. Bricks don't talk, it don't say, chairs don't, none of that stuff do. You do. The gifts of the spirit that operating in you, you are God's greatest asset. Okay. We want to make sure that God's greatest assets are operating at their maximum potential. Because we got to hit the ground running like a new Ford truck. <laughs> okay. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So listen, worship in your giving. Okay. You guys know how to do that. Um, PayPal, um, Cash App, uh, Givelify. That doesn't work for you. Uh, just reach out to Stephanie or Pastor Sam. They can get you some instructions on uh, need to get a check or whatever. However you, however you want to do it. All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray and we're going to get you off of here. All right. So, Father, we love and thank you and give you praise on tonight. We have enjoyed you, sir, your teaching, your instruction, your people. God, as we, as a sum total of who we are, God, begin to draw from your wisdom and, and the revelation and the experiences that we've had in you. God, is absolutely amazing. It's a fresh breath of air. But I thank you that you, uh, where you find unity, you command the blessing. It's been a blessed night tonight uh, because we desire to know you. We desire to understand. We desire to do the will uh, of God for our lives, Father. Thank you, Lord, that we're growing in the unity of the faith and we're experiencing the fullness of the Godhead like never before. And uh, we're coming into the fullness of the stature of Christ maturing and becoming fitly joined together and every uh, joint supplying every need. We, we just bless you for these things, Lord. And we thank you for uh, how you've prospered our hands and you've allowed us to earn. And God, with that, we, 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 we sow seed and we return the Lord's tithe. And we thank you, you've blessed it. And, and when we return the Lord's tithe, you open the windows of heaven, you pour out blessings. There's not room enough to receive. You rebuke the devourer for your namesake, God. You uh, cause us to increase in wisdom and opportunities and checks in the mail, debt cancellation, financial miracles, oh God, uh, witty inventions, creative ideas, men given unto our bosoms, Father, favor, discounts, rebates. God, we thank you for the increase to the glory of God that we may manifest your kingdom in the earth and uh, teach this gospel all around the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise God.